Hey, coaches, welcome to Championship Culture. Got a special guest tonight. Corey Barnes is the head football coach at Midway High School in North Carolina. He's heading into his third year there. And Corey is a, uh, a young, up-and-coming uh, superstar. He, uh, he's done a great job, took over a, a, you know, a, a program that was down and uh, and only a second year turned them into a strong playoff team. Uh, got a lot of them back. That's bad news for me because we open up the year with them. Uh, and I was we, before we started uh, uh, recording. I was talking to Corey. You know, Corey just turned thirty this year. So uh, you know, I was just trying to get an idea of how natural the culture thing is to uh, to younger guys. You know, thirty and below. I'm, I'm 53, so kind of my age and up, it's, it's kind of a, a foreign, uh, foreign thing to us. But Corey's kind of old school. He builds it like a 50-year-old. I mean, he, he gets them in the weight room and really builds it in the weight room. And that's kind of uh, old school. A lot of, lot of older guys, uh, you know, that's how they really build their program. So, Corey, thank you so much for, uh, for, for being on this thing, man. And uh, you've been on a couple of roundtables that we did during COVID. And, uh, and I always enjoy listening and learning from you. And, uh, and I can't wait to steal a couple ideas from you. So let's jump right into it, man. Question number one, can you give a one minute elevator introduction of yourself? Uh, name's Corey Barnes, head football coach, Midway High School. Um, I started out coaching at Pender High School in 2009 as a 20 year old. Um, there kind of lit my fire in coaching. Uh, we went to, a, we had a state championship appearance in 2010. Uh, which just really got my fire for coaching and coaching kids at a young age. Uh, from there, I, I went back home to Triton High School, uh, where I worked under a guy who coached me and Joe McCullough. And at that point in time, we were running uh, wing T, which I'm sure Coach Silas, you remember all that stuff from between the Triton and South Johnson days. Um, from there, uh, I went to North Johnson, where I became offensive coordinator, learned to spread. Um, and, and from there, um, for about three or four years there that's that's when I became the head coach at Midway and and last year we finally got the thing turned around and and went eight and four and and we got had a first playoff appearance in, in a handful of years and and so we're, we're hoping to keep keep that alive and set that as an expectation for us um I'm, like coach said I'm 30 years old I have a two-year-old son and a and uh and a wife here at the house and, and, and we're trying to get through this time, <laughs> this 2020 year as best we can. So, but I appreciate you having, having me on coach. I appreciate you being on man. Uh, we were talking before we started recording. You know, hopefully we're, we're getting to the end of this dang thing with the vaccines coming out and, and uh, right. we're only going to get to play. We figured out where the, where the, uh, we're the cutoff, you know, every state south of right. us played in the fall and we're kind of <laughs> us in north, uh, we're, we're playing in the spring. So yeah, I have high, high hopes on us playing. That's no doubt about that. We're, we're staying confident on that. We're going to get out there. Uh, and you know, and I forgot you were, you, uh, you were a, a Triton guy, man. I forgot about that. Yeah. I graduated from Triton high school in 2008 and, um, I, I got back there in 2011. And I stayed there till about uh, 2000, 2014 is when I got my job at North Johnson. So, um, yeah, I was there for a handful of years, and and I've been through a, I've been through uh, three different offensive systems. We ran flex ball and triple option at uh, Pender High School when I was there. Came back and ran the wing T um, at Triton. Ran the wing T a little bit at um, North Johnson. Then we changed the spread, which is what I do now. So. Um, but yeah, a lot, a lot of, a lot of different experiences. That's for sure. I recommend you go back to Wing T because you're too good in that pistol thing you're doing, man. man. <laughs> uh, and there's a, there's a lot of teams in, in, in the conference we play who, who run that stuff way better than I can. So I think I'll stay where I'm at. <laughs> All right. Question number two: What is your definition? What's the definition of culture in your program? Uh, like you uh, talked about, like we talked about earlier. I, I said our uh, our culture is the, the easiest way we do it is we set it weight room based um, that that kind of blue collar mentality and you learn how how to fight through adversity through that weight room and then obviously you add different things to that like uh, <clears throat> you know adversity is the biggest thing how do you fight through it and that's the biggest thing that our kids learned this year 
I think it was the second game of the season against South Brunswick. It, it was a tight game at halftime. And I said, you find out who you are right now and um, in this game. And, and they really took that to heart, and they finally turned the page, and which led us to have a, a successful year. And, and so fighting through adversity, and, and I, I credit all that to how we work in the weight room. We work in the weight room just like we do on the practice field. Everything's up-tempo. Everything's moving fast, and, and everybody's holding everybody accountable. Um, and, and, and I think, you know, that adversity leads to your atmosphere. You know, what's the atmosphere of your program? Well, if they're following that discipline and they're fighting through that failure, well, then your atmosphere is going to be that of a hard worker and, 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 and turn a champion. And, and, that, and that's what we're always working towards, guys. Love it, man. That's old school. Hey, I, I've been around a lot of old school coaches through, through me growing up in this thing. So uh, that's, uh, I, th I figured that's the best way to be, especially when you can mix in some new school with it. So. <laughs> I, I tell kids sometimes you you can uh, <clears throat> find out what you're made out of about the third set uh, on parallel squat day. <laughs> Absolutely. What you made out of right there. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Question number three. What are the three best things you do to build culture in your program? You already talked about weight room, but I mean, go right. any direction you want to go. Okay. So um, the biggest thing is practice. Uh, I, I'm real big on repetitions. And the more the more you can do it, the faster you can do it, as many as you can. I want to out rep the opponent every week I can. And so I think repetitions and, and speed also adds to our culture for what we want to do. Now, obviously, I mean, you play against us. We don't always go fast, but we don't we practice zero to 60 every day. And so I think that also helps set the tone for how we want to be just because we stay on time and we during a during a let's say during an offensive session we can get through 40 plays in 20 minutes and and that's and that's also setting the tone um for for the culture that we want to create um so every, everything blends together at a certain point um if that makes any sense um from weight room to on the field and then at the end we uh, <clears throat> i let the I, I give the seniors some ownership you know um, we talk about, we always talk about, and that's something I stole from Jim Harbaugh, who's got it better than us, because I, I, and I gave that to these guys, because in this moment in high school during this time, when you're playing athletics, especially football, which is the greatest game in the world to me, it's, you know, in this moment when you're playing this sport, it is the greatest time, and nobody's got, got it better than any of us do at this moment in time in our life going through this stuff, so it's enjoying each other. Uh, making sure you're working hard and doing it at a fast pace and creating that atmosphere in your program that, hey, we're going to fight through adversity. We're going to love each other through it, even if we don't always agree with each other because not everybody always sees that eye. But we're going to make sure we're with each other and we're holding each other accountable through this whole thing. So, Awesome. All right, question number four. Uh, this is this is funny talking to a young guy when I got to ask this question. But what do you know now that you wish you would have known when you first got started? Well, coach, the biggest thing for me is is especially in year one um, at Midway. I wish um, as a young head coach, I, I wish I would have known how to uh, not necessarily interact with the kids better, but know how to tell my coaches what, exactly what I wanted better, if that makes any sense. Because, um, you know, I, I'm a 28 year old when I start, when I started at Midway and, you know, I'm telling guys older than me what to do. And, and you know, some people, you know, you don't want to ever assume, that's the biggest thing I learned is you don't want to ever assume somebody knows what you're talking about or knows what you think needs to be done and get it done. And so that's the biggest thing I've learned through the years is make sure your message is clear make sure your coaches know what's expected and make sure, you know, even in, you know, when it comes down to your duties or all this other stuff that you make sure you have it laid out for everybody. So there is no questions. And so um, that's the biggest thing I, I wish I would have learned earlier on. Uh, I think it would have made my life easier uh, in the first year, which, you know, in year one, we had to deal with, deal with the hurricane. Your, this past year was the easiest time because you got, you started at Hobbs and when I started at Midway. So we had a hurricane year one 
last year was finally a normal year and now we're dealing with pandemic so oh, um we had a hurricane last year too didn't we yeah we yeah but we, see but for us it hit the bye week so <laughs> like it's like it never happened so yeah. um but, uh, yeah. <laughs> all right but uh, uh yeah, so it has it has it. We had a we had a, a bad hurricane the first year. Yeah, it was really bad. Got lucky, it was your bye week the second year, and then yeah. uh, and then the the COVID year. So, so so that means next year's gonna be perfect, man. Ah, uh, coach, I hope you're right with that. All right, man. Well, this went fast. Uh, question number five is: What is your contact info? You, I know you're on Twitter. What's your Twitter handle? Oh, uh, coach, I gotta I gotta pull up my Twitter handle real quick since you you just sent that to me. Uh, it's at it's uh at Coach Barnes zero one zero. That's my Twitter handle. Uh, my email address is cbarnes at sampson dot k twelve dot nc dot us. Um, and anybody can email me, hit me up on Twitter. It it doesn't matter. I'll I'll respond more times than not. And it could be talking about ball. It could be talking about what's going on in the world. <laughs> I'll talk with anybody, man. I, I'm here. I'm here to talk with coaches and, and, let's and help. Give, uh, let's give them some topics. You're you're a great weight room guy. Uh, yeah. you do a great job running a pistol offense, a spread pistol. Uh, you're an odd front on defense. Mm -hmm. And uh, what else? Oh gosh, coach. Uh, I mean, if you want to talk about choice routes, verts, uh, zone read, counter read, uh, weight room, uh, how, different phases of the weight room, spring, summer, in season, out of season, um, nutrition. Um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm all game for it. Um, anything that has to do with ball, man, I, I, I love it. And that, and that's just, not even on the field stuff. That's everything that else that goes into it with the weight room and and everything with taking care of these kids' bodies, et cetera. So, uh, yeah, I'm game for anything, Coach. That's so for sure. One is uh, which is it's worded. Do you have anything to promote? But I just usually say, you know, you get the last word. Is there anything you want to talk about? Anything you want to mention to finish this thing up? Um. <clears throat> nothing, uh, nothing great on, on me, but I do want to brag on some kids. I, I've had go to these VTO combines. Um, talking about some players I've coached. Our quarterbacks, Wyatt Holland. Uh, he was a sophomore last year. He's going to be a junior this year. Um, he he's made the he got an All American invite to go into Tampa in January, um, which is a big deal uh, for him. Uh, and I also have our outside linebacker slash. Uh, um, lineman tight end type kid uh tyler goblin who is uh also got an all-american invite to go to tampa from the bto combine so i'm real proud of those guys what number? um say that again coach what number is godwin uh 21 yeah he's a beast yeah he is he's a beast uh, but uh, but I'm proud of those guys, and and, and that's that's the other thing I you know I, I think is important about our program is trying to make sure these kids get out there and get looks and 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 the and right now you know the VTO combine was one of the only ways for them to to go compete. I said well if you go compete you know you got to be top five for it to matter, and, and those kids went and competed and, and made it happen. So uh, I'm proud of those guys. I'm proud of our program and the direction it's headed. Um, and I, I'm dang sure ready to play some football in, in three months, that's for sure. So, Amen, brother. You did a great job. I appreciate you being on here, man. Yeah. Thanks, Coach. I appreciate you having me.